Some people are born thinking they are God's gift to the world. So when you take those conceited personalities and give them mega stardom, you can imagine just how arrogant they might become. While there are plenty of humble celebrities in Hollywood, it's also filled to the brim with people that are too cocky for their own good. But conceited celebrities are so fun to keep up with because sometimes the things they say and do are just outright ridiculous. So who do you think is the absolute worst? Hey, I'm your host Bridget Shields and here are the top 10 entitled celebrities who need to be humbled. Number 10, Liam Payne. The 29 year old went on Logan Paul's impulsive podcast and became the butt of every joke on the internet for weeks later. Not only did Liam come off as entitled, but fans were shocked when he claimed that his 27 debut solo track, stripped that down, outperformed everyone else. He said, first song, a billion streams. I think it outsold everybody within the band. And I was the last to go solo and I never expected that. In fact, the whole interview came off as a bit of a humble brag, but fans totally lost it when he said, I think it was well known within the band that I don't like taking crap. At a certain point, I made that very obvious. There was one moment where there was an argument backstage and one member in particular threw me up a wall. So I said to him, if you don't remove those hands, there's a high likelihood you'll never use them again. Yeah, I don't know where he got that line from, but it sounds like he stole it from Riverdale. If you're loving this video so far, please hit that like button. It would really help us out. Number nine, Christina Aguilera. The pop star reportedly got into a fight with Mickey Mouse in 2014. According to TMZ, Christina was celebrating her 34th birthday at Disney California Adventure and wanted to have a photo session with Mickey Mouse. But the actor was due to go on a break and you can imagine how difficult it would be for someone to walk around in a giant Mickey Mouse costume all day. But Christina wasn't having it and she pretty much became a Karen. She flew into a rage and called the mouse an a-hole and said, do you know who I am? Not only that, but in 2008, when she was accused of stealing Lady Gaga's look for her album Bionic, she trash talked her in the LA Times saying, you know, that's funny that you mentioned that. This person was just brought to my attention not too long ago. I'm not quite sure who this person is, to be honest. I don't know if it's a man or a woman. I just wasn't sure. I really don't spend any time on the internet. Talk about rude. Number eight, Quentin Tarantino. When it comes to reviewing his own movies, the director is quite clearly a fan of himself. In 2015, he told Vulture, this might come across as egotistical, but I really don't feel in competition with anyone anymore. Tarantino also admitted that there's a little part of me that thinks everything is influenced by me, but that's just my own megalomania. But he also doesn't take criticism very well at all. Most people remember the car crash interview with Krishnan Guru Murthy in 2013, where he ended up verbally berating the British journalist for suggesting that there's a link between violence on screen and in real life. Not to mention when Django Unchained received criticism from people like Spike Lee, who described the film as disrespectful to his ancestors, Tarantino responded in a New York Times interview by saying, when the black critics came out with savage think pieces about Django, I couldn't have cared less. But some might argue that he has a certain responsibility as a filmmaker to not just blatantly ignore people that had real issues with his movie. Number seven, Vanessa Hudgens. The high school musical star made some pretty controversial comments, complaining about having to quarantine during the start of the pandemic. During an Instagram live, Vanessa said, yeah, till July sounds like a bunch of BS. I'm sorry, it's a virus. I get it, I respect it. But at the same time, like even if everybody gets it, yeah, people are gonna die, which is terrible, but like inevitable. Saying this in a seemingly smug way created a massive backlash, considering how many people in her age group Group weren't listening to health officials about the quarantine measures, which were just starting to take place at the time. But naturally, her tone deaf comments got her slammed across social media, with Olivia Wilde tweeting, In a thousand years, they'll dig up our society and they'll find this precious digital moment and be like, Hmm, okay, so this is why they mysteriously disappeared from the earth. Vanessa, of course, tried to apologize and play the whole thing off as a misunderstanding, but it will forever go down as one of her most ignorant moments. Number six, Catherine Zeta Jones, one of the most shocking stories about the actress came from way back in 1998 when an eight-year-old girl was attending a special screening of The Mask of Zorro. She went up to Catherine to ask her for some advice on acting, but Catherine allegedly just looked her up and down and said sarcastically, you're pretty enough, I suppose, before turning back to her conversation. Not to mention what she said in 2018 when she went on a rant about being privileged. She said, I'm sick of being humble. I really am. So sorry I'm rich. So sorry I'm married to a movie star. 
are so sorry I'm not so bad looking. In fact, according to page six, the actress regularly sings her own praises and brags about how much money she has compared to other people. In 2003, she was quoted saying, a million dollars isn't a lot of money for people like us. I mean, if that wasn't enough bragging, she also said, some people collect art or lots of money. We collect houses because if we have to have something to look at, we prefer the view. Interesting. Number five, Tom Cruise. The actor's arrogance reached new heights when he decided to go after Brooke Shields in the worst way possible. He decided to publicly shame her for her moment of vulnerability when she admitted that she used antidepressants to help with her postpartum depression. To which Tom said, when someone says medication has helped them, it is to cope. It didn't cure anything. There is no science. There is nothing that can cure them whatsoever. And if that wasn't condescending enough for you, he added, I care about Brooke Shields because I think she's an incredibly talented woman, but look at where her career has gone. But Tom came under even more scrutiny when he chose to double down on his comments. He told Matt Lauer on the Today Show that there is no such thing as a chemical imbalance. And the two of them proceeded to get into a heated discussion about taking medication. Tom insisted that the only way to cure depression was vitamins and exercise. I mean, imagine thinking that you know better than a doctor. Now before Faye Dunn Faye Dunway has always been difficult to work with. She's also very demanding when she's offset and reportedly shrieks at service industry employees and thinks her plane tickets should always be upgraded automatically. A flight attendant once claimed Dunway was screaming at everyone and saying, don't you know who I am? In fact, she was fired from the Broadway production of T at 5 because of bizarre behavior which included hurling objects at crew members and slapping her wig fitting team and throwing a salad on the floor and insisting that no one wear white to rehearsal because it's distracting. According to an insider, Dunway was so demonic on the set of Mommy Dearest that no one dared approach her for fear of being verbally attacked. In 2019, she was also sued by her former personal assistant, who claimed that she regularly and relentlessly subjected him to demeaning tirades and used his sexual orientation as a gay man against him. So it seems like she's always had trouble with showing basic human kindness. Number three, James Cameron. In 2009, the director was caught on camera at LAX telling a fan to get out of his face. He said, I don't owe you an effing signature, just get out of my effing personal space. Which some people claimed was extremely arrogant, but to be fair, no one is in a good mood when they're at the airport. But that same year, Josh Brolin claimed that he was verbally attacked by him, all because he chose to turn down a role in the Avatar sequel. He told Esquire, James Cameron's effing calling me this name and that name, whatever. The director was also surprised that his comments about Wonder Woman proved to be so controversial. Controversial. He criticized Gal Gadot's appearance and said that it was a step backwards for women. He said, I mean, Gal Gadot was Miss Israel and she was wearing a kind of bustier costume that was very form fitting. To me, that's not breaking ground. I'm not saying I didn't like the movie, but to me, it's a step backwards. Although Cameron caught a lot of heat for those comments, he still stands by them today. Number two, Shannon Doherty. In his 2014 book, Jason Priestley, a memoir, Shannon's 90210 co star claimed that she was a nightmare to work with and that her arrogance was beyond the pale during a trip to New York. Shannon apparently had issues with the car that picked her up and dropped her off at the airport. She said, really? A town car? You send a town car to take me to the airport, not a limo? Jason claimed that Shannon proceeded to complain the whole trip about everything from the food on board to the temperature in the cabin. Not only that, but another one of her co-stars, Jenny Garth, came out saying that she was so fed up with Shannon's bad attitude one day that she lost her cool and tried to fight her, yelling, come on, we're taking this outside. In fact, Shannon's self-entitlement might have gotten her kicked off the hit TV show, as producer and writer Larry Mullen told Entertainment Weekly that she didn't even bother to ask permission before getting a massive haircut, which completely ruined the continuity of the season four finale. And coming in at number one, Noel Gallagher. The English singer and songwriter who is a member of the band Oasis has a long history of questioning other artists' musical abilities. But Noel Gallagher made a whole lot of enemies when he decided to trash Harry Styles. In fact, he hated Harry even when he was in One Direction and decided to go on record calling the band members something that rhymes with rock suckers and said that they would all be in rehab by the time they're 30. Not only that, but he told the Daily Star that the X Factor as an institution 
has nothing to do with music whatsoever, and that performers and bands that came from the show don't work as hard as real musicians. Quote, you are not telling me that Harry Styles is currently in a room somewhere writing a song with any joy. He'll be surrounded by a lot of girls. I can assure you he's not got an acoustic guitar out trying to write a middle eight for something. Noel also claimed that his cat could have written Harry's debut single, Sign of the Times, in about 10 minutes. The singer also trashed Little Mix and said that they were not in the same league as his own band. But clearly, he didn't take into account the size of a fan base either. Well, that's everything on the list for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.